What kind of, you said the intensity is going to start to go up a little bit. Yep, the calories are going to like go up. like an amount of time. Yeah, calories will be helpful. And those are fun. Let's talk about those fun for a calories. second. okay. <laughs> like instead of milk, <laughs> you could drink eggnog, eggnog. <laughs> which is delicious. That has By the like way, four zillion calories in it. Every time I look at it, I'm just astounded. You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm here with my good friend, cohort, co worker, partner in crime, Nikki Zims. <laughs> Welcome to the show. What is the difference between cohort and coworker? I don't know. Okay. Fellow. <laughs> I'm just a hillbilly from Springfield, Missouri. I have no idea. Um, I'd like to give you a, a little update on a couple life things for me. Oh, goody. Love this. Okay. So those of you may remember the story, I don't know, six months ago, maybe, of Mediacom shutting off my cable internet services because we hadn't paid the bill. <laughs> right. Because we, it had been on a debit card that expired and they never sent us a single notice that said that this is the <laughs> debit card. That expired. So even though we pay 99% of our bills on a different card, somehow it was on my wife's business debit card. And then that expired. They shut and it off. And then they raised your price, right? Doubled my price, then to Ooh. restart it back up. Ugh. So Mediacom, now I'm not exactly sure how this works. I know that, and for those of you that follow the news, know well, the biggest thing in the news right now, I don't know if you've heard, there is a presidential election. By the time this comes out, it will be tomorrow. I don't yeah. know if you've heard of such things, <laughs> but it seems like it's sort of a big deal. Another big deal, although not nearly as big of a deal, but I think it will still have some sort of ripple effects. I don't know if you'd heard this, but the government, the Department of Justice, is in a federal lawsuit with Google for a monopoly antitrust lawsuit. It's the biggest one since the Microsoft right. lawsuit that occurred 20 years ago, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not exactly sure what's... Here's what I know. I know it's actually not illegal in the United States to have a monopoly. Oh, and most people think it is. Mm -hmm. The problem is that when you make moves to stifle competition mm. when you have a monopoly or mm -hmm. when you're pushing that direction, that's the problem. So that's what Google's in trouble for. Okay. Now, I have no idea how that works with, say, internet companies like where I live in Springfield, Missouri, where Mediacom in my neighborhood is the only option. Listen, if there were any other option, I would do horrible, depraved things in order to get that other option. But there isn't another option. Mm -hmm. Mediacom's what I'm stuck with. So what I decided to do was, okay, I'm just going to instead go to a business account with Mediacom. I mean, mm. that's what we're running the internet for at the house. That's all day long as I'm, I'm you know, breaking down videos and mm -hmm. doing all this stuff and recording videos and editing podcasts and all that sort of stuff. So the service for the actual internet service for a business account and a residential account is exactly the same. So I have the one gigabit, so a thousand megabytes per second service. But the difference is, is that the customer service for business is supposed to be tremendously better. They're guaranteed mm -hmm. to send somebody to your house within two to four hours if you have a problem for business. Whereas residential, if you've, I'm sure Mediacom's not the only horrendous company like this. You call like, yeah, we'll be there next Thursday. You're like, yeah, mm -hmm. but I don't have any internet and I'm working from home. So that's a problem. <laughs> so I was like, all right. So I'm now I'm not paying double what I was paying, I'm now paying quadruple what I was paying because oh, the good. business account is essentially double what the residential account costs. Mm -hmm. Not a great financial plan, by the way, by the way, to pay 4x <laughs> what you were paying seven months ago. Yeah, that's fun to budget for. Okay, you know? so I get the internet up. It's been fine. It's run fine. They brought some bigger, more powerful modem in, set it up. And again, because Mediacom is an archaic company, I still have to call and cancel the residential service because that's, you know, a completely separate business. And so they say, oh, I see that you've added the business service. Yes, I have. Let's cancel the residential service. No problem. Here we go. We're good to go. Okay, you're good to go. Now you're not getting double charged, which is what I don't want to, I don't want to pay a bill for residential and business. Mm -hmm. A couple days ago, internet goes out and it's just out and it's rainy and gross and the weather's terrible. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's give it a shot. So I call business Mediacom customer service. They're super kind on the phone. Very nice. And they do lots of troubleshooting, nothing, nothing, nothing. Hey, we're going to send a guy out to your house, you know, in the next four hours. Okay. Guy comes out, residential media com has come out to my house and not <laughs> just cut off my residential internet access, but also the business access. 
Oh no, they cut off both of your account. Oh. Yeah, even though the Gosh. guy when he from Business Media Com came out and said, Oh, there's flags all over it that says you have a business account. <laughs> they still came out and shut off both of them. So again, <laughs> I hate you, Media Com. I hope you burn in hell for all eternity. Go f yourself. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now that's story number one. Story number two, completely unrelated. Now, I feel like the Media Com thing is not at all my fault. This is a Media Com business problem, right? Mm -hmm. Story number two, possibly I have something to do with this. Mm. This is a Matt parenting story. Right? Mm. Oh, joy. Okay. Now, both of my girls have some significant chores to do every day. And this is not the chores that they are expected to do, like get up, take a shower, brush your teeth, make sure your room's <laughs> clean. That's what normal humans <laughs> do that stuff. don't live yeah. like complete homeless people, right? Yeah. This is stuff they do for money. Again, recall back to a previous story. The younger one is currently working off a $1,500 debt where mm -hmm. she charged up on Roblox, you know, yeah. video game charges on the Apple store. So she gets up. She's got all this work to do. The older one, 15, almost 16, is at the point where she wants to go like shopping at the mall. And she also and she's not she's actually a pretty good bargain shopper. So she, she likes going to like consignment stores mm -hmm. and as she goes and eats and she wants to eat lunch with her friends. And she, again, she's not like racking yeah, up the bills, but we're like, Hey, you're yeah. she's spending money. And so you're gonna have to work for that. And so they both have a list of chores. Now you knowing me, I have made a very clean, very clear checklist of mm -hmm. items to do each day with an actual box to check off. Do they have like a base camp? Do you have like a family they base don't camp? Have, they're not in base camp, although maybe we should add them to the projects <laughs> and have them do that. Maybe that would work better. Maybe we're yeah. still, we're doing, I'm printing they, it off on PDF papers oh, and yeah. then they're taking, each day they put the date at the top. And so we have a collection of these things at the end of the week that mm -hmm. the younger one is paying off her debt and the older one gets paid for. Mm -hmm. It's about $20 a day. Okay. For each of them. So just to mm -hmm. put it in perspective, and that's about the right amount of work. So it's a couple hours worth of work a day, okay. two, two and a half hours worth of work. It's 10 bucks an hour or so. Like it's cool. a little overpaid for their age, but it's it's not bad. Okay. <laughs> so the other day I'm like, uh, Kaylin, to my older one, have you done all your chores on your sheet? She's like, yes, I have. Perfect. Well, we have had to transition our kids from their summer chores to their winter chores because it's gotten mm -hmm. cold. Mm -hmm. And so Kaylin was doing some stuff around the yard and now it's cold and gross and it was all frosty this morning, literally. And so now she has to do the fireplace. She has to bring in firewood. She has to set up a fire, not actually start the fire, but build it as if oh, cool. we're going to clean out the fire, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I look in the fireplace, there's no firewood. There's no fire in the fire storage thing. Hmm. I'm like, what about the firewood? And she's like, oh, I forgot about that one. Hmm. And I was like, well, how do you forget about it when you're working off a checklist? And she's like, I, I don't know, I just guess I didn't look at it. And so then later on, an hour or so later, there was another very clear job that she was supposed to do, wasn't done. And I was like, what's going on here? Were you looking at the checklist or you did you also I have remember it all the your checklist head? because of I course. wrote the checklist, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't looking at the checklist. I just that, knew everybody? when I saw a thing, I was like, wait, that's Kaylin's job. You know what stuff like, hey, did you feed the dog and give it water? Mm -hmm. And there's no food, no water. And yeah. I'm like, did you do your chores? I'm like, yes. Mm -hmm. like, but there's, did the dog eat all its food and drink all its water mm -hmm. in October when it's cold outside and it mm -hmm. shouldn't really need a ton of water? And they're like, oh, I forgot to do that part. Okay, stop. N quick new story. The younger <laughs> one, the younger one, same kind of issue, mm -hmm. would ask her if she's done everything. I would look at her checklist. Everything is checked off in the boxes. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, I don't think you did this. And she's like, no, I went ahead and pre-checked it off because I knew I was going to. <laughs> now, this creates a situation that people don't understand when I say it's a Ron Reynolds, Danny Reynolds situation, which is my dad and his brother, my uncle, who are literally will blow shit out of proportion so bad. But I need to have an Uncle Danny Reynolds moment here where I need to have a class for my kids <laughs> about how to use a damn checklist. <laughs> Evidently, they don't know. Now, they do know. But that's the problem. I need to sit them down and be like, let me explain how a checklist works. <laughs> See, there's a box next to this stuff that you do, like feed the dog. And there's a box. And once you feed the dog, <laughs> you check the box. You don't check it before you feed the dog because you intend to feed the dog. <laughs> and you don't forget to feed the dog because that's why you have a checklist. But they so have, you like, can go they in have order. an item like they're thinking of complete the checklist as an action. They're like, oh, well, I will 
like that's my action, not like the steps on each one are actions. What's crazy is that's only the case for the younger one. The younger right. one thinks that her action item is to complete the checklist. Yeah. The older one forgets the checklist exists, glances at it for 10 seconds and goes, okay, I got all this. Mm -hmm. And so then she decides she does her work. I'm like, did you do it? And what she means is, yeah, I'm pretty sure I got it all done. But what I'm asking is, did you work through the checklist and make sure you did all the stuff? Mm -hmm. And her answer is no. So <laughs> I'm, I'm failing at parenting right now. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how to make it any easier. <laughs> Give the dog food. When it's done, check it off the box. Did you feed the dog? Did you do all your chores? Yes, I did. But the dog wasn't fed. Oh, I forgot about it. Or, oh, I pre-checked it off. Like both my kids don't know how to use a checklist. Yeah, and it's, it's like that's your that's your communication tool of it, which they're not really, they don't get that. Like that's no, how well. like the integrity of the checklist is not there because you can't that's trust right. it that it means that anything was completed. That's right. the checklist is a sheet of integrity. Yes. <laughs> and if you don't keep the integrity of the sheet, I don't know where we have integrity at all. There's a whole book on this. I forget what it's called. I know. It's really good. And it made like a huge change in hospitals. I tell Caitlin, how am I supposed to expect you to go out? You're going to have your driver's license in like mm -hmm. five months. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to expect you to go out and not die in a car accident. And you don't know how to do a checklist off your basic chores. Like pilots use checklists. Right. ER nurses use checklists. Like the, they're One of the things so the important. pilots in the old, um, oh, I think it was David and Goliath. One of those, um, the guy that wrote Outliers, the hell's his name? King? Oh, wait. No. I'm thinking of something different. I was thinking anyway, <laughs> The uh, Koreans Malcolm got Malcolm Gladwell? Yeah, Malcolm Gladwell. There okay. we go. Gladwell. Gladwell wrote a book. One of Gladwell's book, he tells a story about South Koreans got in more plane crashes for years. This is maybe like in the 50s through the 70s, I think, somewhere in there. And more plane crashes than any other sort of westernized non-third world country in the world. And it was because they have such a code of honor and respect that even when the co-pilot saw that the pilot was about to fly them into the side of a mountain, he wouldn't tell them, hey, you're about to fly us into the side of a mountain, kill everybody. Oh. He would just basically give these like really sort of like vague. Sir, I think that maybe like, if you hey, think. Hey, is everything going okay, sir? Uh -huh. You know, it was like that. Not yeah. like, hey, man, we're about to fly inside a mountain. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they basically, they realized that Americans were, the Americans specifically, were very clear, you know, very like, this is what's going on. And so they actually adopted like some English terms and those checklists to go. And as soon as they adopted that and sort of changed the language where they weren't using this sort of traditional South Korean steeped in respect. Politeness language, and, yeah. Which, by the way, let me be clear. That's great. I think it's awesome. I've been there. It's awesome. I love their culture. I love, mm -hmm. And so it doesn't work great for flying airplanes, evidently. And so they changed it. And, and they, they, I don't think they've had a crash since. There's a hierarchy of importance. Yeah, yeah. It's real important to be like, hey, we're about to hit a, a, a mountain. <laughs> you should you imagine you, you're like sitting with like, you're sitting in a car or something with someone's driving. And you just see them just like, oh, there's a semi truck coming that we are going full speed into and be like, nope, it is disrespectful for me to this say anything about it. This person is my boss or my p parent or, you know, oh my, my senior. Gosh. Therefore, I'm not really allowed to say anything. Yeah, it seems like a bad idea. So, okay, so that's my, there's your math stories. So we want to talk today about, it's, by the way, uh, happy birthday to my little brother. His birthday is on October 29th. Ooh, happy and birthday. And I have always considered my entire life as my brother's birthday kicking off the holiday season. Oh, I like Whereas that. Whereas most people might think totally. of Halloween, which is, which is tomorrow for us. But by the time mm -hmm. you guys listen to this, it will have already happened. Uh, side note, we're also having our first real, legit, <gasps> large right. teenage party at You're my house tomorrow night. You're having a teen party. Yes. Are, is it a will... sleepover? No. What? No. <laughs> Come on. Have you not listened to previous podcasts? We don't believe I in mean, these things. I mean, you've had, had me and Andrew stay at your house. That's got to be worse than a teenager party. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's probably true. Uh, there will be obviously no alcohol involved at this teenager party right. other than for the hosts where there yeah. will be plenty of alcohol involved for the hosts, <laughs> but not for the teenagers. So for the teenagers, it's Frito chili dogs and oh, Halloween boy. candy. And, Do you, you know, lock your beer. library door where all your whiskey is? I lock is? the library door. Yeah. We're going to have a talk about it. And remember mm -hmm. that I have cameras in the library right. for like, nobody could be like, hey, listen, if you steal alcohol from me, you literally might get away with it tonight, but I'm still going to see it on the camera and then it's yeah. death to all. So yeah. yeah, we're having like a legit Halloween party tomorrow night. And Fun. our neighborhood is one of these neighborhoods where we have like, literally like 2000 people come by 
for trick or treating. It's wow. it's like one of the most popular neighborhoods in the entire area for trick or treating. So Ooh, how fun. I just went to Sam's and had to spend like four hundred bucks on candy <laughs> to give to these randos that show up at my house and give them candy. So anyway, That's okay. So, good. so with the kickoff of the holiday season. It creates a wonderful seasonal time. We have spent lots of podcasts over the last, you know, couple months and even couple years talking about how strength is not the be all end all and we don't chase strength purely for strength and chasing numbers. If you listen enough and listen most recently, you might think like, hey, they're not super pro strength and they always (laughs) want to chase quality of life. And and actually, we do want to chase quality of life. That stuff is really important. However, there are times in our life when we do want to chase numbers and we mm-hmm. do want to chase PRs and we do want to really get strong and we do want to set PRs and those things are super, super fun. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so because to me, the way my life has tended to work out over the last 20 years, October through December tends to be a great time to do that. So for a lot of our mm-hmm. listeners, they're probably thinking like, oh, it's, you know, it's cold season. I'm wearing hoodies. I'm not going to the beach and we're not telling you to get fat. That's we'll talk through that. But it is fun and can be fun to chase numbers in the same way that it can also sometimes be grueling. Mm -hmm. Uh, Right now is a really great time of year to to actually chase numbers and push for some PRs. So what are like when a client comes to you and you're like, oh, this person wants to chase numbers, like how is that communicated to you? How do you know? I really want to push for PRs by the end of the year. A lot of times it starts like that. It usually starts as a talk where they say, hey, they can see there's two months left Mm -hmm. in 2020 in the year or calendar year. And they say to me, I mean, they've already thought through this on their own of, hey, I'd really like to set some PRs for the year. Yeah. And these are some goals for the end of the year. So I think that's a great place to start is with Mm -hmm. like quantifiable goals, Mm -hmm. things that you can also attainable goals. Mm -hmm. Right. So for me, chasing numbers doesn't work very well if it's a 12 month goal. I really like goals in that three month to maybe six month long term goals. Like there's no reason to not have those long term goals as sort of a general ethereal thing out there. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm kind of thinking about for this training cycle, if we push really hard and I really dedicated myself to training and hitting numbers, what do we think I could hit? And that's a great discussion to have with your coach. Yeah. And so there needs to be some restructuring in the programming and probably a little bit of a restructuring for your lifter too, right? Like might need to approach things a bit differently or sure, maybe rework their schedule. So like what, what do you start with? Yeah. Well, it's a talk. I mean, mm-hmm. so we start with a talk. So we say, okay, so what that will probably look like. So first off, let's let's just let's go ahead and hone in on because we're a strength coaching company that the goals are chasing numbers, therefore the goal is chasing strength. It's not, mm-hmm. hey, I'm chasing a 225 bench press for 50 reps, which would also <laughs> theoretically be chasing numbers. Mm-hmm. But we're really talking about hitting like one rep maxes probably, mm-hmm. maybe three rep or five rep maxes, but we're talking about a single set, five reps or less yeah. PR. And so, so the first thing we do is we sit down and say, well, okay, what can the goals be? Mm -hmm. What could we hit if we did everything right? Mm -hmm. And we lay out, okay. And do we want to hit PRs on say all four of the big lifts or do we, is the focus really like one that's more important? Yeah. 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 One or two or whatever. I like it when it's that way. (laughs) When someone's like, you know what? I just want to deadlift this by the end of the year. Be like, cool. I don't need to worry as much about all the other ones. Like I do need to worry about them, but it's like easy. It's almost easier on our side just to have this one focus that we can super duper duper clearly prioritize. Yeah, you actually become a little more specialized, right? So I think that's kind of the next big picture idea that when you start to think about, we very much do want to bring up all facets and all aspects of fitness. We want to make sure that people are healthy. Mm -hmm. These things are important always on a long-term scale, but it doesn't mean that in a short-term spot that it's not okay to occasionally sort of just allow those things to kind of go on the back burner, not yeah. health necessarily. We don't need right. anybody to like have heart attacks and run their body fat percentage up to 30 or anything. Like, but, well, you're going to get but a to special go like, hey, we don't have to. <laughs> that's right. We don't, that's right. <laughs> we don't have to condition three or four days a week. Yeah. Like, we may back some of that stuff off. We're probably going to back off the volume significantly mm-hmm. and drive up the intensity. We're going to get mm-hmm. heavier. There's going to be lots more sets of one and two and three and less of the five sets of five, five sets mm-hmm. of four, four sets of five. Like there's going to be less of that because the goal is to drive toward a top number. And so that's kind of the next thing we'll talk about is the goals. Like what are the goals and how are we going to get there? And then you probably have to have a pretty good talk about like you can't miss training now. Like that's right. This is the holidays, which makes, you know, there's travel. There's people tend to get more sick, like more times where you might be drinking and less likely that you want to train. But like if you're going to chase numbers, like 
it's not that time. Like it's not the summertime where it's like a little more relaxed. Like you got to make your training sessions. Like, can That's you right. do that? Because you right. must. Again, <laughs> so for most of our clients, strength training and the training itself is not the be all end all, right? They're not professional power lifters, which is a mm -hmm. little different, right? So that is literally strength at all costs. Mm -hmm. Not every professional power lifter, but you know, the top line is like, I don't care what I have to eat. I don't care what drugs I have to take. I'm not going to do any work outside of the lifting in the weight room. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to find somebody to load my plates for me. I'm not going to go get yeah. the mail because that's too much cardio <laughs> to walk out. Like, we're not talking about that, yeah. right? But the consistency of when you're chasing numbers, you will fall behind immediately yes. if you miss a single workout. Yeah, right? it really can throw things, really puts a wrench in it when you miss a training day because you have that's right. every workout before it is leading up to that one day, that's right. it's, that it's one really, test it's day. It's like when you chase numbers, I think of it as like when you took math in school, like every lesson sort of preceded the next lesson. Like mm -hmm. It was a prerequisite for so if you ever went on vacation on holiday of some sort in school and you left for a week or 10 days and came back and tried to pick up the math where you left off, you're like, mm -hmm. whoa, I, I don't know how to do this now. Well, yeah, it's because you missed the previous 10 lessons mm -hmm. and they all build on each other. Well, chasing yeah. numbers is the same way. When we're trying yeah. to be just generally strong and generally healthy and generally in condition, like missing a workout is not that big of a deal. Consistency is still super important. Mm -hmm. But when you're chasing numbers and you're chasing PRs, you can't miss. And then number two, I had a talk with my client. My client will hear this and you'll know who you are. I, I won't call you out by name, but he is in an occupation where he has to socialize in business case scenarios. So there's a lot of like business parties, especially this time mm -hmm. of year, where, you know, they'll smoke a cigar and have a few drinks. And then he had his first one of those sort of didn't overdo it. He smoked a cigar and had two drinks. It got up at 530 the next morning and literally lifted like dog shit. Oh. Like his lifts were horrendous and Aww. so i was like okay so but it's a good lesson learned in october mm -hmm. when you say okay if you know those days are coming and also this guy is sort of in that sort of mid to late 30s age where you're transitioning from being like young and can recover from anything like you were in college just like i'll just get hammered yeah. and get, i'll wake up hung over and then go hit prs when i'm 22 <laughs> and when you're 40 you're like i can't have two drinks the night before and get up and train you're just a right. disaster so i said hey here's what we're gonna do He's on a four-day split. I said, remember. And by the way, he's as strong as he's ever been. He's hitting PRs across the board. So it's very disappointing when he goes in and he has mm -hmm. this like really down session mm -hmm. and great client and a great guy. And I just said, look, the goal right now is you have to hit your four workouts a week. Yeah. But you know when those social kind of events are occurring. So if a social event is occurring on a Thursday night, then what we need to do is shift your training around and lift Thursday morning mm -hmm. before the social event, not Friday morning, mm -hmm. and then again on Saturday morning, so or whatever that is, right? So, yeah. so we never want to lift after one of those social events where you might have a little more alcohol than you would, or and that has very little impact on your training as long as you can still get it in. So if, if you're normally on a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday schedule, and instead you do Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, because the week is weird and you got weird stuff going on. That's fine. That's totally okay. Yeah. It's actually better than hitting the workout the 5.30 in the morning after you were up till 11.30 the night before having a few drinks and smoking a cigar. I would yeah. rather you push the workout back a day. Yeah, what get we your can't sleep. do is miss the workout. And mm -hmm. what we can't do is have a workout where our strength is depleted by 25 or 30%. Mm -hmm. That's not helpful. Those two things can't happen when we chase numbers. Yeah, totally. So. What kind of, you said the intensity is going to start to go up a little bit. Yep. The calories is going to go like an up. amount of time. Yeah. Calories will be helpful. And those are fun. Let's talk about those fun for a calories. second. Okay. <laughs> like instead of milk, you could drink eggnog, eggnog. which is <laughs> delicious. That has By the like way, four zillion calories in it. it Every does. time I look at it, I'm just, just say, astounded. I do not like eggnog with alcohol in it. I think it's disgusting. No, it makes it really like more that sour is so or something. Gross. And by yeah. the way, if you ever get sick on it, that is not a pretty, that's not, it's not pretty. Don't put alcohol oh in your eggnog. Just drink your eggnog, right? <laughs> want to have a little alcohol afterwards, have a little alcohol afterwards separate. I'm the same one with coffee. You know when people make like yeah, I remember coffee cocktails? That, yeah. And I'm not anti, listen, if you like coffee cocktails, more power, my wife loves them, mm -hmm. do it. But I like coffee and I like whiskey, <laughs> yes. but I don't like whiskey in my coffee. Separate, not they're better separate. <laughs> yeah, same thing with eggnog. Eggnog, you've got Andy's, Pumpkin pie concrete, frozen custards for those mm. of you who live around it. Mm. Those are so good. Uh, McDonald's has right now through Thanksgiving, they have pumpkin pie pies. I'm not suggesting going to McDonald's. 
and after Thanksgiving, they have Christmas cookie pie, which made it which made oh my with God, custard. At, can They're you guys so tell how good. much Matt is excited about this? <laughs> no, I'm not excited about it because now I'm old and fat and I don't get to have these times anymore. So, so I was like, am I passionate enough about talking about this that I can remember what it was like a few years ago when I actually got to chase numbers yeah. and just eat a bunch of calories and have fun? But I never felt with a thing like Thanksgiving and for so many people in the United States, especially if you're married and you live close to family, you often don't have a Thanksgiving. You have three Thanksgivings to go to. I feel like I could do Thanksgiving relatively, quote unquote, healthy, air quotes. It was still going to be very high calorie that yeah. day, but it was going to be real high calorie. It's all on, whole foods. Like, that's the yeah, great the thing of these meals. Carbs. Is, like, that's right. I yeah. wasn't picking at the turkey right. and then eating four pieces of pecan pie. I Not was that eating so much that. turkey that I almost wanted to die. Yeah. And then I ate a half a piece of pecan pie. I was like, all right, I'm feeling good. That was good enough. Right. And if Four you can stay hydrated pie. when you do all that, that's right. That's clutch. Yeah. That's right. Not yeah. hammer the alcohol during Thanksgiving dinner is probably important. hammer the water. Yeah. Hammer the water. So hammer fun calories. So yeah, the and calories really, like, are fun. it's nice to squat and have a little bit of a bloat. Like, yes. you just feel so much stronger under the bar. It feels really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much science there is behind this. I know, you know, Stan Efferding is all like very pro salt. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think it hurts. And so I certainly don't think it hurts pre-workout to have some salt, put on a little bloat, a little, little water, a little carbs, a little salt, yeah. rub it up, yeah. a little squinty eyed, puffy <laughs> cheeks. You're like, man, it feels good. It feels strong. Like really filling out like the, I call it my fat hole on my belt. I'm <laughs> just like, wow, <laughs> I'm getting in there. Okay, here we go. Let's yeah, squat. Yeah. The fat hole's tight today. <laughs> You're like, yeah, it's good. It's strong. Let's use it. <laughs> I can remember back when I was coaching Jillian Ward in powerlifting, I can, I can remember texting her, her husband at the time and being like, you know how she feels. He's like, she feels great. Super tight. She's having a hard time hitting parallel. <laughs> like on her warm ups. And they knew because she was so advanced uh -huh. that that's a good thing. Uh -huh. Like, as it gets heavier, she's just like, she's bloated and tight and feels strong. <laughs> like, it's, com it's the complete opposite. You're bouncing off with a bloat, not. Yeah, it's complete <laughs> opposite of being ready for like the CrossFit games or stepping on stage as a bodybuilder or other things that she's done. It's like, yeah, a little bloat feels good. I feel strong right now. So it's. And as much as I say that now, don't go too far with it because it's really less fun in February where you're like that's digging right. yourself you're out trying, of this that's, hole. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's crazy how much a little water, a little salt, a little creatine can mm -hmm. do. And there are no calories in any of those things. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the things to remember is, is that you can get a pretty good bloat on three things that don't have calories. Yeah. And then add enough carbs to make sure that your glycogen stores are mm -hmm. full, but you're not spilling over and putting on a lot of fat. Yeah. And so that's one way that I look at it. So we always want to make sure whether we are eating more calories than we need to get strong or we're eating subcaloric and we're actually losing weight. We always want to keep our protein high. It's pretty rare that our protein wouldn't be high. Like we need enough protein to continue to build muscle and to repair and really what you're doing is you're playing the fat and carb game, the, some combination of those to make sure that your energy needs are met. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that you just don't need fat that much to be able to perform well. And so you can yeah. still, in a time of the holidays, you can still eat quite a few carbs and really make sure your muscle cells, your glycogen is very full, that sarcoplasm in the muscle is very full of carbs and water and salt, you know, electrolytes, creatine. And get that wonderful bloat and feel full and feel strong without going overboard on the calories. So we're not talking about eating, for you middle-aged listeners, most of you are, we're not talking about eating 5,000 calories a day. We're talking mm -hmm. about going from 2,500 calories to maybe 3,300 calories. Maybe it's an 800 calorie a day increase. That's mostly, that would probably be for guys. Um, you know, to be able to get that and then just being smart about the other stuff that you take. Mm -hmm. Things like the water and the creatine mm -hmm. and the salt and the right supplementation. Those things are really important. So you can get a lot of benefit there. So is there an amount of time that you like to have before like the time between someone says, I want to chase numbers and the time that they want to actually do their maybe a mock meet or they want to test it? Yeah, it's a great question. That's actually why I felt compelled to do the podcast this week mm -hmm. is that I think six to eight weeks is perfect. Mm -hmm. I think that longer than eight weeks, like certainly for people who want to or who are very advanced, they will often have a 12 week type program. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a 12 week type program, but this time of year where this is coming out on like the first of November or somewhere in there, first, second of November, you have two full months before the end of the year. And most people there just have this sort of 
paradigm shift that occurs the first week of January where they're like, mm-hmm. hey, spring is coming. Mm-hmm. Winter is going to be over. I'm going to need to pull off that bloat, right? Like mm-hmm. a lot of times in the summertime, you don't want the bloat just because like you're wearing less clothes. You're going right. to the beach. You're going Hot. to the pool. Yeah. And you don't want the bloat because you just feel like the aesthetics, it, it's not great when you have a bloat, even if you have the exact same body fat percentage. Yeah. If you, if you have a healthy body fat percentage, if you're a guy and you have a body fat percentage at like 13, 14, 15, 16, perfectly healthy, you're a female, it's 5% or so higher, you know, it's 20, 21, 22, somewhere in there. Someone who is bloated versus someone who's not even the same person, you mm-hmm. look very different, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. My 15 year old calls it morning skinny. You, know, you get up in the morning, <laughs> she's like, yeah, but we got the morning skinny going on right now, right? So yeah, you get up morning, in the morning. Yes. Those are nice. That's right. You get up, yeah. like, I look great. And then you start to add the, you know, you add the, yeah, the, the rest, oatmeal you and add have the, the eggs. Yeah. Yeah. And even when you eat really clean, even when you eat like it's oatmeal and eggs, but if you, you know, and you salt both and have water and have your creatine in the morning, a couple hours later, you've put on maybe four or five pounds of like just liquid and food and bloat right. that you're holding and you mm-hmm. just look a lot different. Yeah. Which is okay. In wintertime, it just doesn't seem to matter as much. Because we have our nice hoodies on. <laughs> Eight weeks is great. <laughs> Eight weeks is great. And I push towards setting PRs mm-hmm. like the week after Christmas. I love the week after Christmas. The mm-hmm. week between Christmas and New Year's is awesome. Mm-hmm. I love setting PRs if you're already pretty strong. I love setting PRs the week, like the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday after Thanksgiving mm-hmm. is awesome too because you mm-hmm. just hammered it. Yeah. On Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Um, so those are those are fun times to do it. Those and I fun. think they're short enough that you can chase. I think if you chase numbers longer than 12 weeks, it starts to become mm. a grind. That's like it a starts job. to become like I you'll start getting yeah. tired. So when you're really advanced and you're doing a 12 week program or even a 16 week program, you'll get to those last six to seven weeks mm-hmm. and you'll be like, OK, I'm starting to get real tired of chasing numbers. That makes me think of something. So I've been in those periods where it's like the two weeks before a taper, the next week being like the meat week, you feel horrible. Yeah. Like it's like you feel like your joints are just going to crumble and you're like really not sure if you're hitting numbers. Like you hit a number that used to be a warm up, and you like it goes really slowly or maybe you miss it and you're just like you have all this doubt about trying to actually attempt something heavier. Does that happen as much on a shorter six to eight week thing? Like, should people anticipate that? Probably not. Yeah. And also probably depends on if the PRs they're shooting for are home PRs that they can do over the Mm -hmm. course of a week Mm -hmm. or if they're like a legitimate meet that they have to go hit on the same day. Yeah. Right. I think the amount of pressure for the PRs themselves actually sometimes make a difference, right? When you can sort of like take it easy and just do, you know, in in, kind of a COVID world where there's online meets and we can video ourselves and we can do it over the course of the week. I think there's less pressure there. And also when it's shorter, there's less pressure. But I will say for those of you who are on longer programs that have a taper, a significant taper, I don't mean significant like a two to three week taper, but I mean like at least that week before the PR attempts, Mm -hmm. there is a significant decrease in stress. Big time. Then you just have to ask yourself, Mm -hmm. why is there a significant decrease in stress? Mm -hmm. Well, because You've had so much fatigue built up over the previous four weeks, yeah. right? So what you've done is you've driven yourself into this place or your coach has driven you into the place of sort of a, you're not overtrained, but you're definitely have accumulated fatigue enough that things are feel harder than they should be. And right. so it's very important for those of you who have a coach that the coach at that time is very encouraging with you and says, hey, you're exactly where you need to be. Yeah. This should be hard right now. Mm-hmm. You're not recovered. You're mm-hmm. full of fatigue. Right. We've taken you in it. We've kind of overreached a little bit Mm -hmm. with the goal that when we taper, your body is going to recover and adapt to all that stress Mm -hmm. and become stronger than it ever was. There's this sort of we don't really I don't say believe, but we don't really accept super compensation as is defined by the some of those original kind of physiology books. But Mm -hmm. but it is sort of that. Right. Like it's this kind of like I'm kind of withering and I'm hurting and everything feels crunchy. And then you take this week or 10 days or so of lots of recovery. You still lift kind of heavy, but like it's really low volume and you eat a lot of calories and you rest a lot. And then all of a sudden what you'll find is by like Thursday or Friday of that taper week, you can start getting antsy. Right. You like can't antsy. help it, but just get really excited. Be like, I yeah, am Now ready. I want to go do the thing and yeah. now I'm worried. Am I getting weaker because I'm so right. antsy and I want to lift? Like that's also exactly where like you should be. Like the training stress that you had those two weeks is replaced by mental stress in that last week of like, you don't have that, like you literally have hours and hours more in your schedule where you're just like, 
what should I be doing? Should I have a part-time job now? Like, I'm not training right. this much. Should I be training? Like- well, and, no, and no feedback that you're getting stronger, right? Because right. you're not doing enough really yeah. to give you true feedback that you're getting stronger. That's where it takes an experienced coach or an experienced lifter who's done it enough to go like, yep, I can see that your speed's at 70% or 75% of what mm-hmm. you've been used to lifting. I can see that they're exactly where they should be and that everything's mm-hmm. coming back and sort of your and then you look at other things, you look at the other, like you look at your mood and you look at libido and you mm-hmm. look at like kind of ideas of like the sort of typical side effects of high cortisol stress, right? So of, like a little bit of depression, a little bit of like, I just want to sleep in. Yeah. I don't have a lot of libido. You'll have that at the beginning of that taper and those things will start to go away and you'll be yeah. like, I'm sleeping better. I'm waking right. up at six in the morning by Thursday or Friday. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of horny again. Like whoop, whoop. And then like, you feel like, <laughs> all right, so those are all good signs. And you don't necessarily have the signs that say like, hey, I'm moving the bar really heavy because you're not yet because right. you're going to do it when you try the PR. Not supposed to yet. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of it is just being able to keep the mental toughness and, and to go like, hey, I put in the work. I did the thing. I chased the numbers. Now we're doing the taper. Now here we go. Yeah. So if you had it your way, would you have your lifters do a mock meet where they do everything on one day? Or would you, if they're maybe they're on a four-day split, would you spread it out? Spread it out. And what I order would like you do it in? I like meets unless somebody is a very competitive power lifter. Yeah. And so again, there, there are probably more needed mock meets in 2020 where there's a mm-hmm. lot less meets. Mm-hmm. So if you're really, really used to competing three or four times a year in power lifting or strength lifting, then I think a one-day mock meet is is probably the right move because you want to try to mimic what you would deal with at a regular meet. Mm -hmm. But for most of our clients and most of our listeners, I think it's way more fun to have sort of PR week. Yeah. And you come in and you're like, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the PR on, you know, the press today. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do a little bit of volume bench, but that volume bench is still going to be pretty heavy, but not enough to like tire me out for when I try to set my bench PR here in three more days. Mm Mm-hmm. And then do kind of the same thing, like set your squat PR and then like do enough deadlifts to be able to prep for the deadlift PR in a few more days and then mm-hmm. come in, you know, and then do your bench and your deadlift or whatever. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what order they're in. It's just, I really like to focus on that singular lift yeah. that day. Yeah. So. I think that's fun too. And it's like those mock meets, it looks like when you look at your program, you get cool. I have nine lifts to do, How hard can but it be? man, they turn into a long day. And if you yeah. lift on your, on your own, you end up being in this like kind of vacuum of emotions in the same yep. space and you just like ramp yourself up for squat and then you just like have to chill and warm up your bench and you like ramp yourself up and calm yourself down. It's like, it might work great for some people to do the mock yeah. in their garages, but I, I actually really like spreading it out for that reason. Me too, me too. If I'm, if I'm going to lift by myself, I'm definitely gonna spread it out or if it's yeah. just Rachel and I. If I were gonna do a mock meet at home, I would almost always try to coordinate it with three or four other friends to mm, come over. Mm-hmm. Uh, or it, and hopefully three or four other friends who are also doing the mock meet. Yeah. But at worst, three or four other friends to just kind of hang out yes. and chill with between Help the, you load lifts the bar. And cheer you, that's right, and cheer you on when it's time to go because mm-hmm. atmosphere makes a difference. There's many of you have been to an actual meet before, and sometimes those meets go eight hours, oh, 10 yeah. hours, 12 hours on a yeah. long day. And they're long and you're tired and you're exhausted and then you feel like you got hit by a Mack truck afterwards. But when there's an audience, it's a little easier to get up for the next lift. Yep. What's really hard if you do a mock meet is by the time you get to the deadlift, which is almost always last, you're just like tired, you know, I don't have any Fs to give right. left. And so I don't care. Whereas if you're standing in front of 200 people, you're like, now I have to care because there's a yeah. bunch of people sitting out here yelling adrenaline. at me. So yeah, that's right. Totally. So I, if I have a mock meet, I would still try to put as much of an audience, even if it's family. If it's calling your wife and your kids or whoever out there to just kind of watch yes. and yell and cheer you on. I live better when my kids yell at me. Oh, cool. Every once in a while, I get ready to set a PR. I'm like, yeah. you guys, everybody come in here. You know, my sister will be over here working. And I'm like, hey, come in here and just watch me do this. That's cool. And these are people who you don't have to impress. But the fact that they're just in there cheering you on, you're like, hey, I'm not just doing this for me. I'm doing this for them, too. And it's, you know, it's not the same thing as doing it at a meet. But yeah, Gets it's you better out of your than head. doing it all by yourself. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. So awesome. So we've talked a lot over the last several months about there have been times in my life when I really hated chasing numbers. Mm -hmm. And it usually comes from a long period, a long competitive period, that 12-week, 16-week, 24-week competitive period where you're chasing numbers for three to six months. It can get really long and really old. But for those of you who have been training for general strength, it's late October, early November. You feel really good right now. Right now is a great time to chase numbers from now to the end of the year, set some PRs for 2020. Uh, and if you're listening to this in subsequent years, set it for whatever, 2021, 2022, whenever you're listening to this, 
it's a good time to do that and set it up on that six to eight week cycle. Have a blast, mm-hmm. chase some numbers, eat more calories than you normally would. Don't make yourself fat. Don't make yourself unhealthy, but just enjoy it. You're probably not going to have to go walk onto the beach, you know, jacked and tan over the next several months. And so you can throw on the hoodie, throw on that Barbell Logic hoodie. It's so soft, by the way. It Finally is got my Barbell really Logic. Cozy. They're yeah. awesome. Throw that thing on, put on the sweatpants, <laughs> put on the Metallica, <laughs> and like chase some numbers because it can actually be fun. So I don't want to give yeah. the implication that chasing numbers is always not fun. There's right. actually you don't times have to put your blinders really on fun. and ignore your family. Like you just like, That's right. it just adds That's right. kind of an, I like it sometimes. Just like Me it too. gives you something, a different reason to train for things. And it, like you stop worrying as much about everything. Be like, oh, well, I'm worried that I'm so far away from my bench five rep max. Be like, you know what? It's okay right now. That's not yeah. important right now. So you worry about less, which is kind of refreshing. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. It, it very focuses you on mm-hmm. the goal, right? There, yeah. I actually think it's way more difficult for my clients when we're trying to just train for training's sake. Mm-hmm. You know, we're such goal-oriented people. And so to have the goal, like ch- the nice thing about chasing numbers is there's a goal we're chasing. And so yeah. the and there's focus a life of the training, it. like sometimes right. when we only trace that's numbers, right. it's just like everything comes down to that day. But with this, that's just right. like, you know what, there's more after this that we're going right. to work with. So it's okay. And that's the difference between, I think, a general population, a person who's just trying to be generally strong and still having fun chasing numbers, still maybe super strong. Mm-hmm. And the super sort of professional power lifter who trains all year for yeah. nationals, yeah. who trains all year for worlds. And there isn't necessarily... Yeah. In their mind, there isn't necessarily anything after that day. Their it's whole life sort down. of come is a cul- like their life is culminates in that day. Yeah. For us, it didn't have to be that way. So we can yeah. chase numbers, have fun, mm-hmm. enjoy the holidays, have some fun at the parties, mm-hmm. drink some eggnog without the alcohol, <laughs> get good sleep. <laughs> like it's fun. So yeah, yeah. Awesome. So chase some numbers. I would encourage you all to chase some numbers here over the next eight weeks. Set some PRs, and then the other nice thing that does it sets some great numbers for you to set as the goal to beat in 2021. Now I have some numbers to beat as I get into January. Mm-hmm. I start stripping off some of that fat. I start stripping off some of that bloat. I feel a little bit better. I feel a little healthier. I bring the conditioning back in. And now I'm a healthier, more conditioned version of myself in mm-hmm. February and March. Mm-hmm. And now I'm, I'm going to start pursuing beating my previous year's PRs. Yeah. When I did it with the bloat in the holidays, now I'm going to try to beat some of those PRs without the bloat in the spring and it gives you numbers to chase then uh, for next year as well. So it kind of sets fun. a nice standard for the yeah. following year. Cool. So there you go. Chasing numbers, not always bad, sometimes fun, yeah. sometimes good. <laughs> and you don't Key actually to have to run. numbers, <laughs> clearly McDonald's pies. <laughs> <laughs> there's a swanky donut place next door to me that i can just smell the donuts getting made all the time and apparently they have a delicious pumpkin pie donut so i feel like i need to go have one of those we discovered last <laughs> week when i was in socal with you sancho's mm-hmm. tacos which oh, is right down the road MG. those are so some, those are some of good. the best tacos i've ever had in my life and so oh, that would be great yeah find a place like that mm-hmm. taco place. well there's another thing right like you can go eat that og tri-tip carne asada taco yeah that's not that unhealthy no i mean it's like a bunch of kind of dripping with grease but (laughs) (laughs) i think that was more sour cream actually some of the sour cream than grease (laughs) yeah it's so good some of the lifters that we met at our camp last week and we're gonna lift together tomorrow which will be in the past yeah so maybe we'll we'll have to (laughs) anyway go to sancho's afterwards yeah little post-workout sancho's so (laughs) <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Barbell Logic Podcast. We'll keep coming at you with these new episodes on Mondays as well as series both from the past and from the future. We, I have had quite a few questions actually this week about the principles mm. episodes. We have not let, let mm. those go. We will bring those back as series, probably little four-part series, five-part series with my brother. Great. Those are awfully fun to do, so we'll bring those back as well. But rather than trying to chase the sort of monotony for us of three podcasts a week, it makes it easier for us to knock out that either a podcast on Monday or a series on Monday. And so you can always look forward to, you know that Monday you've got fun stuff coming out. And then sometimes if those series are nice and long, we'll spread them out over the course of the week for you. So keep tuning in. We love to see those five-star reviews. Again, very, very close to a thousand five-star reviews on Apple iTunes. And you can find us anywhere, obviously, on Apple's podcast, on Overcast, on Stitcher, on Spotify, Google Play, wherever you listen to podcasts. And I think... What was it you said when we hit a thousand, you're going to do like a bench one RM in your speedo? Was that right? Is that what I said? Something like that. Okay, maybe I should. Bench one <laughs> RM. Okay, I'll do it. I'll chase numbers the rest of the year and uh, bench one RM in the speedo when we hit a thousand five star reviews. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, <laughs> everybody.